All right. For the record, it is uh, August 9th, 2023, 11 o'clock a.m. I'm Phil Alberts here, examiner for the City of Lake Stevens. We have a, a preliminary plat variance and administrative design review application today for LUA 2023-0037. The um, hearing format is we'll start off with a presentation from staff, and that'll be Ms. Schmidt after she's finished. We'll move on to applicant comments if they want to add anything. Then we'll move on to public comments. And after the public is done testifying, we'll go back to Ms. Schmidt to answer any questions she might want to answer and uh, provide any rebuttal evidence she finds necessary. Then the applicant gets final word. I get 10 business dates. That's uh, two weeks to issue a final decision. Now, by state law, I'm only allowed to consider evidence that's put in the record today, and that is composed of the testimony provided by all of you who testify, as well as uh, the exhibits that are um, presented for admission into the record. And Ms. Schmidt has put together a very thorough and detailed staff report along with, uh, uh, at this point, 33 exhibits. And I'm gonna share a screen to show what those are, if I'm able. Oh, I can't share a screen. Is that something someone can enable for me or? If not, maybe, oh, there we go. It looks like I'm enabled. Let me put that up. Okay, so this point you should see what is page, let's see here, 19 of the staff report. We have a total of uh, 33 exhibits exhibit this morning, which is 33, which uh, was revised, con revised condition regarding sprinklers from the, uh, the fire department, Mike Messer over there. Um, and Ms. Schmidt, have there been any other um, public comments submitted since um, what was, was listed in the staff report? I can't recall what number that was for the collection of, of public comments. I just want to make sure that I got them all here. Was that? Yes, hearing examiner, we do actually have the last exhibit was exhibit 33, and that was revised conditions from the Snohomish Regional Fire. Um, that is submitted to the record. Then I received one this morning, and oh. that would be exhibit 34, and I received okay. it just a little bit ago, and that is from Jack. And I apologize, Jack. I'm not sure on your last name, but the email name that came through was Arius T, and that would be comments and concerns submitted eight dash nine dash 23 would be today. Right, how do you spell his last name there for the um jack would you please spell your last name for the record since it wasn't on the email oh yeah sure i can uh, type in the chat okay and, uh, okay how do you spell that sir so my last name is yun y-e-u-n-g -E -E oh. okay and that Thank was updated uh, today miss schmidt yes it is okay all right. Thank you. Oops. Okay. And, and Ms. Schmidt, what was the, I mean, there was a collection of public comments. I was trying to, what was that exhibit number? Um, the new exhibit number. No, no, the, the, the collection that, that, that was, uh, when you put the staff report out, you had like uh, several with staff responses. I'm just trying to find it on the list. Oh, sure. The public comment list. Yeah. Or the public comments. Uh, let me pull my staff report. And let me take a look here. That was item. That would be exhibit 27. Oh, 27. Okay. And so no new um, uh, letters have been added to that. Everything that's been added has been added as 33 and 34. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. And these have all been uh, available on the city's website and the exhibit list is composed of the uh, the staff report prepared by Ms. Schmidt. And then we have the preliminary plat maps and a lot of information goes with these critical areas reports, which assess the presence of wetlands and any other uh, areas designated as critical areas under the city's critical areas ordinance. We have a traffic impact analysis, crosswalk analysis, construction plans. We have drainage to address stormwater impacts. We've got a geotechnical report to address the, actually that that's kind of separate from critical areas, um, to address the geologically hazardous areas, which also qualifies critical areas, um, fire flow analysis and uh, environmental review. And, uh, and then the, the, the notices that were sent out in the letters we just talked about today. In total, there are 34 exhibits there. As I say, they are available. 
um, just by a show of virtual hands now, and you can click on your virtual hand by clicking on the bottom of your screen, or if you're not muted, uh, does anyone have any objections or need any uh, to see any of these documents before they go in the record? Okay, let me look at the list. I'm not seeing any takers or persons voicing objections, so I'll go ahead and admit exhibits one through 34 at this point. So with that, Ms. Schmidt, let me uh, swear you in. So raise your right hand. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Yes, I do. Okay, great. Go ahead. All right. I will go ahead and share my screen next. And I'll start the PowerPoint presentation for today. Okay, perfect. Uh, I just would like to verify that everyone can see the PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. Specific. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, good morning, hearing examiner, and good morning, everyone. Today I'm presenting the Fegerly Preliminary Plat, which is a planned residential development. This project includes administrative design review along with a variance proposal. And within the public hearing record, as the hearing examiner just previously noted, we have exhibits one through 34. I would like to point out that the brand new exhibits, exhibit 33 and 34, will be uploaded online to the file um, after this public hearing since they were received. And if anyone at the course during the public hearing would like to see those, I can display those visually. The last time I did visit the site was August 1st. Some of the basic information for the plat includes the applicant, which the specific representative is Ryan, Ryan Larson, who is here today on behalf of the Land Pro Group. The property owner is South Lake Ridge, LLC. The site is comprised of two existing addresses and two single family homes. One is located off 20th Street and the second home is located off Williams Road. The property size is just about 13 acres. So taking a look at the site from an aerial above, I'd like to point out this is 20th Street Southeast, and I'm going to actually change my marker here to the great red blob so we can see where we're going here. So here's 20th Street, the, south, the site lies to the south of it. And in addition, the site has another frontage along Williams Road. The third parcel is over here to the east of Williams Road. There is another road connection here, 121st to the south, along with 22nd over here to the west of the site. The property was annexed into the city of Lake Stevens in 2022, and the zoning for the site is R8, R12. Basic background information is we received the application back in February with a second submittal on March 7th. The application and the public hearing, as far as public notification, have been notified and sent to the public. There was a public meeting, or what I like to call a neighborhood meeting, held on March 29th. We had a good attendance for that meeting. In addition, uh, the type of permits, they're going to be processed through the city's code as a Type 3 permit, which requires a public hearing. The hearing examiner makes the final decision on this application. And the SEPA and the MDNS, which is the environmental threshold, was issued to the public and to the Department of Ecology on July 5th, 2023, earlier this summer. Mm -hmm. Looking at the property information, the city's comprehensive plan designation is medium density residential, and the zoning is R8, R12, as previously stated. They are proposing to do a planned residential development the density equivalent maximum for the zoning in the site is 124 lots. The proposed lot from the applicant is 69 lots. They are meeting the minimum density requirement of 60%, which would equivalent to 41 single family lots. So they do meet the minimum density threshold and they do not exceed the maximum density. Again, there are two existing single family homes. So if you were to walk out on the site, you'd see their residential homes with residential outbuildings and landscaping. The site does have two category three wetlands. They are of the lower quality. The applicant is proposing buffer averaging and enhancements. And I'll have a map up here later so we can take a look at that. This is an overall 
plat map so we can just take a look to get oriented. They are proposing 69 lots of these, 54 of them are single family homes. 15 townhome units are proposed along the frontage up here. There is usable open space in the center of approximately a one acre. They are proposing to preserve NGPA tracks over here and over here, and we'll take a closer look at those later. The single family lot sizes range from 3,600 to 6,332 feet. The townhome lots also meet the city's code requirements for townhome lots. Their average lot size ranges from approximately 1,100 square feet to approximately 2,500 square feet. There is 11 on-street parking stalls, and each unit has a minimum of two parking stalls in the driveway along with additional parking stalls in the garage and on-street parking for the townhomes. Some of the design features include access from 20th Street and Williams Road. The roads will be public with a couple private access tracks, one to the townhomes and a few of the single family lots. There are full frontage improvements proposed along 20th Street, which include ADA ramps, curb gutter sidewalk, along with planter strips and street trees and landscaping. Along Williams Road, they are proposing a controlled stop intersection there um, due to safety concerns and the fact uh, to reduce speeding along that way. So there will be a controlled stop of a four-way stop along with a crosswalk to provide access of those lots on the east side of Williams Road to have amenity access to the recreation open space on the west side of the plat. Road B has a narrow profile as it enters into the existing road of 20th Street Southeast. Purpose of that is to slow traffic down also and to have a nice transition for those roads. And I'll have a visual of that here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and take a look. Here are the two frontage sections for 20th Street for the half street improvements here. So you can see the improvements that I described. They have a road section for that. And these are on the construction plans in the exhibits. And in addition, here is the full frontage improvements to be provided along Williams Road. This would also include uh, street trees, et cetera, and along with a sidewalk. So it will improve the safety and pedestrian mobility within the area. So again, there's parking on Longs Road A and B. I would like to point out that the new Exhibit 33 from the fire department here does require, require sprinkling and those specific units are listed on those conditions. As far as tree replacement goes, there are quite a few trees on the site. There's 106. They are proposed to be removed during clearing with a replacement ratio that the city requires a three to one. So the applicant will be installing, they're required to install 318 trees. They are actually proposing to install 323. The additional five trees are going to be placed along the townhome lots to provide additional buffering and to count as the shade trees for the townhomes themselves. There are 11 trees offsite that were as assessed, um, and I believe the resident, Jack, uh, he has been working with the representative, Ryan Larson, to discuss um, the transition of the grade along with retention of trees along his property line. So that would be some of those 11 trees, as I noted here. The application and the developers required to have a school bus stop per the Snohomish School District standards along 20th Street. And in addition, due to the topography on the site, they are proposing a variance for a increased height of retaining walls. So let's take a look a little more specific at the plat design. The, the tracks here noted in blue are the wetland tracks. So this is track 999 and 995 over here. There are two wetlands on site. They're located in these areas. The green areas are the open space and recreational tracks. I would like to point out that this swath here, this is also the Everett water line. And so the applicant has coordinated with the city of Everett to provide recreational amenities above here. Obviously there are restrictions, so they are limited on what type of recreational facilities they can provide. So they are providing a soccer area, frisbee golf, 
along with benches and picnic tables, et cetera, to make the most and maximize the use of the open space and recreation area without harming the water line, which is below. There's another open space sliver along the side here, the eastern side, um, for protection against and a buffer for the existing residences over here. This application does require a sewer lift station in coordination with Lake Stevens water or sewer district, excuse me, waters through PUD. There is a stormwater vault. This plat has been designed in accordance with the city's stormwater regulations of the 2019 manual. So the proposal is in compliance with the city's stormwater regulations and utility provisions. Let's take a look at the variance request. This site has a, quite a grade change. It's approximately 80 feet. It would be from the northeast corner down to the southeast corner. The applicant is requesting to increase the maximum height of an eight foot wall to 13 feet. So that would be a 62% increase. This requires a variance for the city code. And taking a look at the perimeter of the site, because generally that is the biggest concern for the residences out there. I would like to point out that the site is tiered in order to reduce grading. So you can see throughout the site, there are retaining walls along the frontage. It ranges from approximately two feet to 10 feet here. The corner is four feet, which I'd like to point out because it, you wanna keep it lower so you do have visibility and they have achieved that there. Along the Eastern corner down here, the retaining wall is proposed to be two feet to 11 feet, 11 feet down here in the corner, two feet up here. Along the Southern property line, the steepest or the highest retaining wall, it ranges from 3.6 feet over here to 13 feet over here. So as you can see, the retaining walls proposed along the perimeter are not that high above the city's uh, normally permitted retaining walls. And then there are tiered retaining walls throughout the site here to accommodate the grade changes with potential home designs. So the variance criteria, they have met the variance criteria without applying for a variance. They would lose approximately 14 lots, reducing the lot yield to 55. This does not reduce the requirement for infrastructure improvements, which includes the lift station, uh, the roads, vaults, uh, utilities, et cetera. Um, so providing the variance makes the project more financially viable. And it also provides additional housing units, which helps the city meet our projected 2024 population deficit. We do currently have a deficit in the city for housing units. So this does assist in achieving that for our GMA goal. And again, just to reiterate uh, the variance criteria, staff has summarized it, that it is compliant with the variance criteria. So taking a look at the site design itself, because they are proposing townhome units, it does require administrative design review. The requirements for this require a landscape plan. They have proposed a detailed landscape plan throughout the site, and it also includes street trees, as well as internal landscaping and street front landscaping. And this is just one section of it here. I just wanted to give you an idea. This is included as an exhibit within the hearing packet. And in addition to providing a landscape plan, building elevations are required to break up modulation and to provide interest and quality of design on all four sides of the building. So the applicant has provided three different elevation designs for the buildings. I've just included two within the PowerPoint just to provide the general public an idea of what they can anticipate for the visual aesthetics of the townhomes along the frontage. And these will be reviewed with the building permits when and should if the project's approved and the building permits are submitted. Public comments. I did receive two public comments throughout the course of this application. Um, one of them is here in attendance this evening. Um, the other one is not, but those are included in Exhibit 27, I do believe. And we did receive one agent comment from DOE. All the comments have been responded to by the developer, providing 
response back. I would like to point out that Exhibit 34 that was just submitted, we have not had the opportunity to respond to. So I would like to point that out. Um, there were safety concerns about 20th Street and Williams Road. That has been addressed with the controlled four-way stop there and the crosswalk. The DOE comment has been responded to by the applicant's biologist and confirmed that the pond is not regulated and they agreed with that reply back. With that, I would like to summarize that the preliminary plat, the PRD, the proposed design along with the variance proposed is in compliance with the list of the city's regulations. I will not re read the list. And in addition, it's before you and the SEPA threshold did have three comments and those were addressed also. Findings and conclusions, staff finds that this proposal is consistent with our comprehensive plan. And I, excuse me, there is no rezone pro proposed. The rezone was actually proposed uh, and done previously with the annexation, so please strike that from the PowerPoint. I will revise that when it's submitted as a PDF. The proposal is conditioned, meets the RCW requirements, the utility provisions that's required by code, and does meet the procedural requirements. So in summary, staff recommends approval of the preliminary plat, the administrative design review, and the variance. And with that, I would like to open it up to questions. Okay. Yeah. And um, exhibit 30 in the exhibit list said that comments from the school district are still forthcoming. And I just looked up online. It's not, there's nothing there yet. Had, did they ever submit any comments or what's, what's going on with that exhibit? They did not submit anything. I have not yet received anything from Tom Lofman. I haven't received a specific detailed requirement except for that they do need to provide a school bus stop along 20th. Okay. Are, are any of these kids walking to school or is, it, is that one bus stop going to be uh, for all the schools that they go to? Do you know? Uh, the one bus stop would, there would be pickup obviously for the elementary, middle school, and then the high school. Mm -hmm. And then the school bus will actually go north up into the Batch Helder development, which oh, okay. is located at the 20th Street intersection or the access mm -hmm. drive to this plot. Yeah, no, what, what I was really asking is if that one stop was for all three schools, it sounds like it is. Yes. So. That's and, correct. And, yeah. And is it, is it, is that bus stop essentially, where is that going to be located again? Uh, let me go ahead and pull up the plat map. Yeah. All right. Let's see. So this is the variance, but it would be located somewhere along the front here. And the, oh, okay. the exact location has not been determined, but okay. it will be required between the developer to coordinate the exact bus stop with the Sonoma School District. Oh, okay. Yeah. So definitely safe walking conditions since they're, every home's connected to it essentially via sidewalk, right? So yes, that works out. Okay. And then I'm um, just question about your, your staff, or I just had a little trouble um, figuring out what you intended with some language on page six under okay. paragraph C2. It says um, the applicant states that without the variance approval for the retaining walls, approximately 14 lots would be lot would be lost, reducing the total number to 15. Uh, even with the reduction oh. lots, there would be very little reduction in required infrastructure based on the site's topography. And then I don't get this sentence. This would reduce the lot yield to 34 units. What, so what makes them lose another 21 lots? I, I, I didn't quite follow that. Oh, excuse me. Let me take a look here because it would reduce it to 55. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, let me do the math. Maybe that's my planner math here. I'm bad at that. Because I mean, 69 to 55, that's where you lose your 14. I just couldn't figure Correct. out where you came up with 34. So that's an error in my math. I apologize for that hearing examiner. That will be corrected. Okay. So it's just, did you mean to say 55 there? Or? 55. It should be 55. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. I, I wasn't sure if there was something else going on that reduced it further or okay. That makes it a little more No, sense. there is not. It should be 55 lots. Okay. And then on the um, Department of Ecology, concerns um once you heard back from the applicant was that shared with ecology again to see if they agreed or or was, was that pretty much the end of it at that point for yes staff? it was it was forwarded okay. to back to doug gresham and he confirmed back that he was satisfied um, i can also provide that documentation if it is not in there i certainly oh. can do that 
No, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I was just curious if they, if they agreed with the final determination. So it sounds like they did. Okay. Well, thank you, Ms. Schmidt. Appreciate your comments. I'll move on now to applicants who wants to speak on behalf of applicant today. Anybody? You don't have to, but now's your chance. Just make sure you're- Hello, Ryan Larson. Holding this hand. Oh, all right, Mr. Larson, let me swear in. Do you swear firm, tell the truth, nothing but the truth in this proceeding? I do. Thank you. Okay, great. Go ahead. <laughs> My name is uh, Ryan Larson. R-Y-A-N, last name spell L-A-R-S-E-N. My address is 10515 20th Street, Southeast Suite 202 in Lake Stevens, Washington, 98258. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I'm just uh, wanna give a just a very brief presentation to the uh, hearing examiner. We have reviewed in full the staff report and concur with staff on their analysis. Um, subject to the new conditions provided by Mike Messner of the uh, fire district, which is exhibit 33, I believe. And when he added uh, updated conditions seven and seven A, and we would uh, encourage the hearing examiner to include those as the new conditions for the sprinkler systems required for the development. Um, I've had a chance to review the email uh, submitted at 10.05 today from Jack Ying, and I'd like to respond to it because we haven't had a chance to do it. They're pretty straightforward comments on his part, and we will respond to them. And I'll just summarize each of his concerns. One of them had to do with school districts and new developments for schools, including potential overcrowding. The applicant is required to pay uh, school impact fees to the Snohomish School District, and we have will be part of the each building permit they'll pay those fees to the district to help offset any um, needs that the district may have the second concern is how did the city conduct an ass assessment of the nearby schools um, first and foremost it is not the city's responsibility under any circumstance to determine how the school districts are to operate or how to fund their schools or um, allow configuration of schools or teacher pay so that's uh, uh, not a city requirement it is a school district requirement <laughs> He also said he'd like to express concerns over traffic condition. Again, the developer has uh, provided a traffic analysis for this project. Uh, the traffic analysis meets the city requirements. And again, as part of this project, we're required to pay mitigation fees. Those mitigation fees will be paid at time of building permit for each unit. Um, and then traffic measures. The applicant's also providing full frontage improvements along the entire project of curb gutter sidewalk. Um, half Street overlay on uh, 20th and then on Williams Road to the east. We're providing full frontage improvements along that entire project between the two. Um, and just wanted to point out that Jack is the owner um, on the east side of the project right there with the um, green uh, red light is that Christy showing. Um, another concern brought up by Jack is facilities for community parks and amenities. The applicant is providing the open space there at 998. Um, in the middle of the project, we're providing various amenities, picnic benches, tables, a little trail that goes through the system, open air, play area for um, sports or soccer. And again, we've working with the city of Everett and their water department, and they've concurred that this uh, use can go on top of their water line um, to allow us to provide that, those amenities. In addition, I believe there's park impact fees that the applicant's required to pay as well. Um, seeking clarification, he is on uh, wetlands and green open spaces. Again, we have two open space tracks. We provided a wetland report. As part of that, we're providing um, buffer enhancement in a couple of locations, and you'll see those areas in blue, so the applicant has fully addressed the needs or uh, concerns regarding wetlands. Um, another concern is about such as police, fire, medical services due to the increased population, any planning regarding these issues. The applicant... <laughs> There's um, uh, no specific requirement um, in the Snohomish or city code to address fire, medical service, and those things, but this area is being served by the local fire district and city for um, police protection, as well as fire services. Um, there is no specific mitigation fee that the fire district has for this project or in the city of Lake Stevens. Final concern is regarding his personal residence um, regarding the retaining wall we're building, um, the trees along his property line are all within our property. The applicant intends to take every single the trees down along the property line. We'll put up a temporary construction fence as we typically do on our property. <laughs> so we'll put a temporary fence up there and then I, we'll install oh, the sorry, retaining I, walls. I cannot hear you. What's that? Yeah, someone having trouble hearing? 
Uh, well, Ms. Larson, keep going. Oh, yep. So we will, um, yeah. as part of our project, we will be removing the trees along our property that are on our property. All the, so all the trees will come down. We'll install a retaining wall on our property. We'll put the temporary construction fence as we're going through the project up there. Once we get um, to the point, so we will build a brand new. Hear. Now, who's who's uh, saying they can't hear? Jack. Okay. I think Jack's saying he can't hear. But that's that's what is I'm anyone saying. else out there having trouble hearing? I, I'm, it's coming in pretty well for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I lost from the beginning. He was saying um, the last concern. Can you please repeat? Yep. I will just restate okay. that. So um, Jack brought up the issues regarding um, his personal property. We will be removing the trees along the property line, which are on 100% on our property. We'll be removing all those trees. We will install a temporary fence as we're required to do along the entire, you know, around the construction site. That construction fence will be installed on our property. We'll install that. When we install the retaining walls, when we're done, we will install a cedar fence along the property line or on our property. So the cedar fence will be on our property and, and not encroach on anybody else's property. Um, the other concerns he's brought up about noise and those kinds of things, unfortunately, uh, urban um, <laughs> The urban growth area is intended to be built upon um, as one of the you know, main essentials of growth management instead of building out in the rural areas. So what will happen is during construction, we have our normal construction operating hours that we have to man are mandated by the city in which we can only construct during. We won't be providing water, um, watering the site in case of dust, those kinds of things. So the site will be watered throughout the site during if it's being built in the summer months. Um, clearly that will happen. Um, so those are the issues that he brought up in his letters, and I just want to make sure we address those in the hearing so we, we have those on records as well. Okay. And, yeah. and Mr. Larson, uh, just, can, just I, for, can I speak or? You know, just, no, just, just, on. Uh, yeah, Jack, you'll have a chance uh, once we get to public comment, which is coming okay. real soon, but yeah, I'd have to get okay. this. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, let's uh, let Mr. Larson finish up. So uh, Mr. Larson, I mean, just for uh, you know public information, I mean, how long do you think the construction will take to put this together? I would guess about uh, 14 months ish. 14 months. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, is that continuous or is that kind of like, you know, your first grade? Um, I think the intent is to uh, start construction this year. We're going to be installing the offsite infrastructure. We have a lift station we need to build. We need to install water and sewer within the Williams Road and 20th Street. So those items will be starting this year. And those uh -huh. are things we can do during construction this year. <laughs> there may be some opportunity to go out and site before it starts raining to um, clean the site up of debris, that kind of stuff, and, and cut the trees down and mm -hmm. get the site prepped for the springtime. So when we come, spring times come, we can go full steam ahead. Okay, okay. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Larson. Anything else you wanted to say? Nope, and again, okay. we support the staff report 100%, subject to adding the new conditions seven and seven eight. Okay, all right. Well, um, Jack, I'll let you speak now. I think um, we need your last name for the records for starters. And uh, yeah, just, oh, yeah. Yeah, hi, uh, good afternoon. Oh, good morning, my name is Jack. And last name is Yuan, Y-E-U-N-G. Oh, okay, sure. Let me swear you in, Mr. Yuan. Uh, do you swear firm, tell the truth, nothing but the truth, Miss Proceeding? Yes. Okay, and, and just so you know, your video is dark right now. It's not required that you show yourself, but I didn't know if that was your intent or not, but we just see a black screen from you at this point. Yeah, so I could, because I'm at the works uh, location, oh, sure. that's yeah. why, yeah, no I, I can the video okay yes yeah, so i noticed that the map on the other side um so th there's a um space to like have the space between another um, resident and their community but how come our site there has no gray space or something it because they're retaining wall and everything building just like nine inch from me and I don't see how can they not damage anything from, from my property. Mr. Larson, do you want to answer that? My man, is it working? Yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect. Um, so um, we, there should be no damage to any adjoining property as we're, we're doing this project. Um, this is a cut wall um, on this property adjacent to Mr. Yang's property. So everything I'm will sorry, occur my name, from- My last name is Mr. Yuan. Yuan, yep. So everything will occur from our, our side of our property. The contractor will work from our site. They'll dig down from our site. 
and uh, there should be no um, impacts other than you know obviously the working of the contractor in the area should be the 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 minimal impact to um, the site of um, of Jack. So, okay, so you just saying that there should be no. So I can only say that I don't have any protection except anything happen after. Is that what you're saying? Um, uh, well, Mr. Larson, did you want to add anything else to what you just said? No, thank you. I do not have anything else to add. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. A anything else, Mr. Yearn? Yeah. So, um, the, uh, he was saying like that this project is last for like 14 months. Yes. Is there any restriction on that or what if they pass the 14 months period, uh, time of period? Uh, Mr. Schmidt, maybe you can answer that. I don't believe there's any time restriction except for the, the, the application expiring at some point. I, I don't recall what the time frame is on that. But. Correct. As long as they start work within 180 days and continue to make significant progress, if it takes them two years, they're allowed to construct for two years, et cetera. Um, there is no time limit on it. Mm -hmm. I would like to point out that the city's noise ordinance, just so everyone is clear of what they are, the hours of construction are allowed during the weekday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. and on the weekend from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So I just just wanted to state that so everyone's clear on the expectation. And what's the limit for the noise then? Um, there's a decibel limit. Um, construction obviously is exempt from that, and you can find that in the city's noise ordinance, and I can send that to you, Jack. It would sure, be in the Lake Stevens Code. It would be Chapter 9.56 is the chapter. And I will put a note here to email that to you, sir. Sure. Okay. Mr. Aaron, anything else? Uh, not no what now okay all right appreciate your comments and yeah i mean essentially as 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 far as impacts to your property uh, mr Yearn, you have the same rights any other private property owner has i mean people aren't allowed to damage your property and I, i'm sure mr larson has the experience to you know uh, avoid doing anything like that but um uh, approval of this project does not give the applicant, uh, you know, any any clearance to do anything on your property or to, you know, damage your property in any way. So you would be protected just the same as, as anybody else. And, and uh, um, you know, as I said, I mean, uh, developers uh, can't afford to damage adjoining property when they do these projects. They, they would get too expensive really fast. So it's unlikely anything would happen. But again, you as a private property owner have a right to have your property protected if there are any problems. And obviously, um, you know, if they, they do one avenues to let the city know if there's any problems cost on your property, because that would be considered a nuisance as well. So uh, let's see. Is there anyone else out there who wants to speak at this time? If you do, just uh, put uh, raise your virtual hand. That's, again, the yellow um, hand at the bottom of your screen. I'm not seeing any takers. And, I, of course, I will read all of your written comments really closely. But uh, yes. Yeah. Anybody else? No? Okay, last chance. All right, Ms. Schmidt, I guess back to you if you had any final comments you wanted to make. I have no further comments. I think they have been addressed by the applicant and by yourself, the hearing examiner. Okay, all right. And Mr. Larson, any concluding comments? Nope. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. I'll go ahead then and, and close the hearing. And Mr. Yearn, thank you for your written comments today and from the comments from everyone. And I usually, in my written decisions, try to address everything that's, uh, you know, that's that's conveyed to me as, as an issue. And that decision will be done in 10 business days, which is a couple of weeks. And Ms. Schmidt, do you uh, email that to people or mail it? Or how do you distribute that? That is emailed, and I put a sentence in there if they're requesting a hard copy that they reply back, and then I will also mail them a hard copy. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all. I appreciate your patience for the little technical delay at the beginning there, but we got through it, I think, pretty well. So um, thank you all for participating, and we're adjourned for this morning. Thank you. Bye.